Hello and welcome to Infinity. Time for a giveaway, something very simple but also very useful, and uh, that is soft shapes, which are basically shapes with a blur, but let's have a look at them. And uh, the way to get to them is you follow the link below and you'll get to a page like this, which has got all my downloads on it, and uh, go to the soft shapes there. It tells you more about them here. And you can either download from the link at the top, which is the basic macros file, or from the download there at the bottom, which gives you a zip file if in case your system is not so fond of downloading just AF macro files. So, and then you go to the library here, which is via the View Studio, and click on the little hamburger there and import macros. Go to where you've got it, hit that and hit open, or just double click it, and it turns up down here open ready. So there's Dave's Soft Shapes. So in here you've got a whole bunch of things, and there's basically a soft shape for every one of the rectangle tool on the things below it. Right click that there, all of these, there's one here which is blurred ready, which means it's very, very easy to just to pick a shape and, and drop it in. So let's do it. So here we've got a picture here, which is okay, but it's a little bit dull. Let's do some brightening up and adding contrast. So we're going to start off with the soft trapezoid. So if I click on that, nothing immediately seems to happen unless you are looking in this area. And the way to see it is, is we've got a layer over here, and we want to pick up that layer there, so I go to the Move tool. If I click on that, then you can see the outline of this. So I'm just going to drag this and resize it into place. So I drag this over here. These, by the way, are a thousand by a thousand pixels, so should fit most uh, uh, images. When I get to here, I'm going to rotate it, but if I hold down the Shift key, it'll clunk in uh, regular intervals, so I can get myself a nice vertical here. Drop that up, up against that one there. I'm going to control mouse wheel out a couple of times so I can see a bit further out. I'm going to drag the bottom down here, so the bottom node goes to that, that corner there. Then up one here, because it's going to go beyond here, because I'm going to stretch this sideways to the end of the train there. So that this point here is the continuation of this line up here. But then to get the other end in, I need to double click the blue line somewhere, just double click it, and you get these red nodes here. And you can then bring those in to the shape there of the train. So this trapezoid is very useful for anything that goes away. When you get those horizontal red lines, that means that it's, it's a regular shape. So each of the angles here are all the same. It'll snap to it if you've got the snapping uh, manager set there. And let's go Control zero to get back to where we are. So has it had an effect? Well, let's have a look. I take it off and on. You can see, yes, it's lightened that. Because the colour is going to be whatever the fill colour was beforehand. So white is often a useful one to do that. When it arrives, it's on 50% opacity and with overlay blend mode. You could change that if you like. So I can go from here, for example, to soft light or hard light, and you can see not so good there, but I could go to screen or other uh, blends as well. But overlay is often a useful one, which is why it's the default. But I put this on 50% opacity, which means that you can turn it up to brighten it or turn it down to reduce the effect. So you just slide that to whatever you like to do that. To see it without the shape on it, if you've got the Move tool, just click outside and it will show you there, it'll disappear, and click on the layer again to see it. You can always do that. These are, of course, non-destructive, which means you can put them in, take them away without much difficulty. So let's put another one in. And a control, roll the mouse wheel out again here a bit to give me a bit of space. And I'm going to go for a crescent. Just click once on that. Make sure you've got the Move tool up here, and then we can drag it down. I'm going to put it onto this bank here. So I need, just need to pull this round a bit and sort of pull out this, the size, shape of it to fit the bank here. Double click on it to get those arrows, those red dots here to adjust it and just play around with it until it's about the right shape. And anything which goes off screen is perfectly fine. Then Control zero to go back in again. You can, of course, change the colour of this. At the moment, you can change it over here and over here. It's white to start off with, but you can click on that, say, and then play with the colours here. 
So it's a, there's a bit of yellow in both the grass and the flowers there. So maybe I'll just type, make a tiny bit yellow. I can even sort of fine tune it with the RGB sliders or whatever way you're going to do there. And again, to see it without, you can make sure you've got the move tool selected there and click outside, or you can just click one other tool there or away from the layer selected. Snow again there, you can click that as before and after you can see we brightened that up a bit. Now let's just make a little bit more light on the kitchen. Are the, the flowers and trees up there? I said kitchen then. Why did I say kitchen? Strange. Uh, let's click on the soft cloud here. And the clouds, shapes like this, which are just so got like a curly edge, these are useful just to sort of break up the edge a bit more. So I'm going to turn that up there and rotate it a bit so it's over these here. And you can do things with this so you can reduce the opacity of this. But you can also do things like go to the blend ranges, which is here. And let's say, let's just, if I turn down the darks here, that means I'm going to keep in the lights. And you can play with this to just make it work on the lighter areas and whatever you, know, you, you can do with that there. So that gives you another way of controlling this. And uh, one more thing we're going to do is we're going to take a triangle. Click on the triangle there. Take this here and we're going to put this up into the sky. So hold on the shift key again, click it all around so it gets that way around. Put it up to one end of the sky here, other end over here. I could sort of zoom it all the way out, but I'm going to do something else with this. And that is on the context tool here, it says convert to curves. If I click on that, I can now double click on this and I can put a extra node in there. So I can pull that down there and just fit that in. Then take this one here and fit that around there. And also, because well, I've converted to curves now, I can do things. I can just bend these around as well, any of the edges. And so you've got a lot more flexibility, but you haven't got the regularity of the basic shape. Let's change the colour of that. Um, rather than yellow, let's see if we can make that blue. Make quite a dark blue, in fact. And what you get, there we go. That's a lot more interesting sky, isn't it? So there we go. That's as far as we need to go with this. Click outside so we can see all of it. Control zero. And that's the whole thing. And if I click on the top one, shift click on the bottom one. Um, I'll go to another tool here so I can, you can see it uh, without all the blue lines and then click one of those and it turns the whole lot off and click on there again and you can see how much difference we've made very selectively within the image. That's it and thank you very much for watching.